friends and welcome back to Speech Day with Tiana May. I'm Tiana May and today's superpower we are going to achieve is resilience. Yes, resilience is the superpower you are going to achieve today. So it's a longer word but it's really simple. Resilience is when you get through those tough times. So we all face difficult times that we go through. Maybe you are having trouble with school, maybe it's reading, math, Maybe you're struggling with paying attention on those long school days, or it could be making friends. Resilience would be the act of you getting through those tough times and making sure that you keep trying to just be a better you. All right, friend, so as you can see from the title, we are gonna be reading The Boy Who Became King, written and illustrated by Anthony Circio. It's a really good book based on a really awesome person, so I'm excited to get started. So if you have your own copy, go get it. And if not, sit tight and we'll get started together. The Boy Who Became King, written and illustrated by Anthony Circio. Less than a week after Christmas in 1984, a young woman named Gloria received the best gift she could ever imagine, a baby boy she named LeBron. LeBron was born in the city of Akron, Ohio. Gloria, her mother, and even her grandmother all helped raise baby LeBron. They all lived together in a big house until both women passed away, leaving young Gloria and LeBron all on their own with no place to stay. It was hard for Gloria, moving from place to place, trying to work and take care of a young child without any help from LeBron's father, who left before he was born. Gloria did her best, but it only became more difficult as LeBron got older. They always had to move from place to place because they didn't have enough money. One time, they moved five times in three months. Oftentimes, Gloria would leave for work and an eight-year-old LeBron was left at home by himself. LeBron missed a lot of school. He would wake up, watch TV, play video games, and even walk to the store on his own. He didn't want to go to school. He wasn't like the other eight and nine-year-olds who didn't have to worry about where they were going to sleep each night. And when he did go to school, it wasn't easy for LeBron because he was always so far behind. Sometimes he would get sad because the other kids had so much fun and he had so little. They had nice clothes, two parents at home, and they did well in school. All LeBron had was his mom, and they were very, very poor. One day when LeBron was outside playing with his friends, a friendly man approached them. Any of you guys like football? He asked. We love football, one of the kids answered. That's my favorite sport, added LeBron. Good, because I'm a football coach and I'm looking for players. First one to make it to the end of the parking lot is my running back. Go! All of the kids took off running as fast as they could. LeBron got a late start, but one by one, he passed them all, winning the foot race by what seemed like a mile. The friendly coach found Gloria and asked her if LeBron could play on his team. Playing on a football team would make my Brown Brown so happy, and I would love that but there's no way I can afford it and I won't be able to get into all the practices, Gloria stated. Don't worry about any of that. I will take care of everything and I'll pick him up every day, replied the coach. The very first time LeBron touched the ball, he ran 80 yards for a touchdown. He was a star. 
Gloria would get off work on the weekends to come and watch the Browns game. She was his biggest fan and even became the team mom. LeBron's friendly coach was a man named Frankie Walker. Frankie and his wife, Pam, really liked LeBron and Gloria and always wanted to help out where they could. Mr. Walker also coached his son's fourth grade basketball team, the Summit Lake Hornets, and signed LeBron up to play. LeBron immediately fell in love with basketball. He had a natural gift that others saw. Mr. Walker helped teach him the fundamentals of the game, and then LeBron would practice what he learned. He practiced and practiced. He practiced more than anyone else, and when he practiced, he would dream of someday playing in the NBA. Gloria received some bad news. Her and LeBron were going to have to move again. Once Pam and Frankie Walker heard this, they offered to help by letting LeBron live with them until Gloria was able to save up enough money and find a place for them both to live. Gloria was very sad, but knew that she could come and see LeBron whenever she wanted. At the Walkers, LeBron had to wake up every morning at 6.30 to get ready for school. LeBron had to make his bed, clean his room clean, and help out around the house. He also had to try hard in school, and if he wanted to play basketball, he had to finish his homework first. When he was done doing everything he had to do, LeBron was able to do what he wanted to do, and that was play basketball. He would go outside and practice for hours, every day. LeBron didn't miss another day of school after that. He even found out that he liked going to school. His favorite classes were music, art, and gym. After school one day, LeBron's mom stopped by to see him. She had some very exciting news. Thanks to the Walker's help, Gloria was able to save up enough money to get her and LeBron their own place. They may not have had many things or a lot of money, but LeBron and his mom had a lot of love. They loved each other very much. LeBron told his mom all about what he had been learning in school and also about his dream of playing in the NBA. Over the next few years, LeBron would play in hundreds of games and was gathering up many fans with his standout play on the court. But there was not a bigger fan of LeBron than his mom, Gloria. LeBron became a two-sport star, playing both football and basketball in high school. LeBron was fast, strong, and could jump high, all the things that made him an excellent receiver in football. He was one of the best receivers in the state of Ohio, and many college teams offered him scholarships, including Notre Dame. But after his junior year, it was clear to everyone who saw LeBron play basketball that he would eventually play in the NBA. So he decided that he wouldn't play football his last year of high school and risk getting injured. He had become a legend on the court and was twice named the best player in the entire country. People from all over would come to watch the kid from Akron play basketball. LeBron was such a gifted basketball player that filmmakers detailed his young life in a movie, and he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, all while still in high school. It was in high school when LeBron was given the nickname King James. He was the king of every court he stepped on. Many began comparing him to the basketball legend and his hero, Michael Jordan. LeBron led the Fighting Irish to three Ohio State titles. 
After he graduated from high school, it was no surprise LeBron decided to go straight to the NBA. It was also no surprise that he was the number one pick in the entire NBA draft. The rest, as they say, is history. LeBron James has become one of the best, if not the best, basketball player that the world has ever seen. He is capable of dominating any game that he plays in against any player, playing all positions on the basketball court, from point guard to center. He has won NBA titles, MVPs, in award after award. King James is already a legend, but there's one thing about LeBron that truly makes him a king, more so than anything he has ever done on the basketball court. He cares about others. LeBron has never forgotten how hard it was for his mom and him when he was growing up. He is constantly helping those who have no money, no place to stay, and little help. The LeBron James Family Foundation was started by LeBron and his mom. It has helped thousands of struggling single parents and their children stay in school by providing places to stay, food to eat, and schools to go to. LeBron James' childhood dream came true, and now he wants to help others to have their dreams come true too. Now that's what I call a king. Never give up. Wow, that was an awesome story. So can you tell me what was the theme or the important message about that story? Go ahead and press pause and think about it for a second. And press play when you're ready. So the theme of that story or the important message was our word of the day. Do you remember what it was? So the word of the day was resilience. Yeah, so resilience was the theme in this story. LeBron had several hard situations and struggles that he had to face, but he used resilience and he kept getting through those difficult tasks. Good job, friend. Awesome. So who was the main character in that story? Go ahead and press pause. Good thinking, friend. So if you said LeBron, LeBron James or King James, you're correct. Awesome job. Next question, friend. So what were the two sports that LeBron loved the most? Go ahead and press pause and think about it. And press play when you're ready. Way to go, friend. So if you said basketball or football, you're correct. Awesome job. <laughs> All right, friend, next question. What was the problem or conflict that LeBron had to overcome in this story? Go ahead and press pause. All right, good thinking, friend. So if you mention some of the struggles that LeBron faced, like not having as much money, having to move over and over again, or even sometimes school, then you're correct. Good job, friend. All right, you're doing well. So next question, what was the solution or something that helped the problem? Go ahead and press pause. All right, good thinking, friend. So if you mentioned Frankie or Pam Walker, you are correct. Those were two people that were so kind and helpful during LeBron's tough times. They often helped his mother and him make sure that he had a place to sleep, food, taught him some responsibilities and chores, and also encouraged him in his schoolwork. Good job, friend. All right, next question, friend. What was LeBron's dream? Go ahead and press pause and think about it.
All right, good thinking. So LeBron's dream was to become an NBA player. If you said to be in the NBA, become an NBA player, you are correct. Great job, friend. All right, keep it up. Next question. How often did LeBron say he practiced to achieve this big dream? What do you think? Go ahead and press pause and think about it. All right, so LeBron said he practiced every day, not once a week or once a month. He said he practiced every day to achieve this dream. If you said every day or all the time, you are correct. Good job. All right, last question, friend. You've been doing awesome. So at the end of the story, what did LeBron prove? Go ahead and press pause and think about it and press play when you're ready. Good thinking, friend. So this can have a few different answers, but if you said he proved that resilience and hard work pays off, you are correct. But a big one I love is that he proved that dreams come true. And just remember, friend, your dreams can come true as well. Resilience and hard work is what it takes. Great job. All right, so you have officially earned your superpower of... Resilience! Yes, you are a resilient person. And I want you to try to show off the superpower that you've earned today. So whenever you face a hard task or something that's difficult, try again, keep going, overcome that task so it's no longer something that's hard for you. It's something that's your strength. All right, thank you so much, friend, and I really hope to see you on the next video.